Foodscape take over. If anybody asks, we call it permaculture. Planting seeds, we secure our family's future. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. Yeah. Welcome everybody, my name is Erica Kerr and I am from Hip Agriculture. Here in episode one, I'm going to be giving you guys an introduction to the Locavore cooking series. And in this cooking series, we're going to be featuring the foundational starch crops that grow so well in Hawaii, that are nutritionally dense, and that I've been playing with in my kitchen for years. So what I'm going to start with is a really favorite that looks challenging, but it grows so easy. Whether you have not very much soil, dry, or lots of rain, this is yucca or cassava. And then a foundation to Hawaiian agriculture and the staple crop that we just love here is kalo. We're also going to be looking at how to use plantains or green bananas. Sweet potato, which hopefully a lot of you guys have already been using and consuming. And, you know, the really up and coming star within Hawaii agriculture is ulu or breadfruit. I really want to help you guys understand how to demystify and be able to use these things in all different forms. We are going to just go over the basics and the foundation of how you just pre-cook it and then from there of peeling, chopping, slicing, or grating. It's going to be really easy. I want to share with you guys some simple staple tools that I use in my kitchen. I really love my tools and having a good cutting board a sturdy sharp knife, a good quality peeler. I have a couple peelers, one's a bigger one for the root starches and a smaller one, a box grater that has the thicker and the finer setting. Mortal and pestle is awesome for spices and infusing flavors. The Vitamix or a good quality blender works really great for what I'll be showing to use with plantains and making sauces and chutneys and something that gets a lot of use is the food processor. Now we're gonna be introducing you guys how to just prepare cassava. This was just dug up this morning. I like to score it, and there's this thicker outer peel that we're getting off. And do note that cassava is a main starch crop and food for so many people around the world, whether in Africa and Latin America. In Latin America, how it's referred to, a vianda, just means food. So this cassava can store for about a week just at room temperature after it's dug, but it's really best to peel it because the skin otherwise kind of dries onto it and it's harder to get off. So here we just scored it and we're peeling back the peel. This part is never really cooked with it. It's always peeled. To store cassava, and if you have a lot of it with your crop harvest, you can store it in a bucket with water or a pot and I change out the water every day or two days and that helps keep it going for another week if you can't fit it in your fridge. So we have it like so, we're going to just boil it with some water and we want to be able to cook it until it's fork tender. A lot of these big tubers that are fibrous can be dangerous so you want to have your hands over, never underneath the knife so I have some nice pieces here of the cassava and we're going to just put them through the food processor. If you didn't have a food processor and you're making smaller batches, you could grate it. And a lot of times this is something that's traditionally done before it's making bread. And what they do is they squeeze out the juices. Cassava is also fermented to actually build more nutrition and nutrition density. But a lot of times this is how you can have your cassava. And this right here, if you let it rise on top, this is your tapioca starch. For ease and speed, we're gonna use the food processor grating. So I'm just gonna turn this on low.
And now this is how I freeze it, or I can just have it ready to use raw like this in our pastelle recipe. Kahlo, or taro, is a nutrient powerhouse. And so this kahlo has already been pre-cooked and harvested. When we harvested it out of ground, it comes out like this. And if you can imagine, here was the ha and the leaf of the kahlo plant. So that is cut off and we replant the top of this as the kahlo huli. So with this, it's always important to have your kahlo pre-cooked and be careful that there is oxalates, calcium oxalates in the kahlo. And so when you work with it raw, it can make your hands itchy. So if you're really sensitive, wear some gloves or it just kind of itches and goes away over time. I like to pressure cook it. I have a really nice pressure cooker here. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour pressure cooked. It's gonna take at least an hour if you're just boiling or steaming it. And you wanna make sure you have enough water in there before it boils out. After I've cooked it up, I leave the skin on because if I were to cut it up and peel it, it's gonna have more surface area for bacteria to grow and not last as long in my fridge. And that's the case for all of these things. If you keep it peeled and whole, it's gonna last longer in your fridge and less likely for bacteria and scum to get all over it. So this is how I store it and it keeps for a long time. If you don't have a good peeler and it's not working and it's sticking, then just go ahead and carefully just cut off the peel. This is gonna to work too. Now this is very different from what Katyana showed us in the other Kahlo episode where they're peeling it more traditionally by scraping the peel and a lot of times that's done when the Kahlo is still warm and that's really easy. Plantains. Plantains are starchier and less sweet than bananas and they're higher in vitamin A, C, magnesium, potassium, and iron. We have three different ways that I prep my plantains. So the easiest step that you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut off the ends, one end or both ends, and stick it in your pot to boil it in a small amount of water. And this way that I really like this is that this is how it's ready to go and after it's cooked, I put them in a plastic bag and put them in my fridge and then they're gonna be ready for future use. The second way that I like to peel plantains is if you're trying to quickly cook them and you got dinner and it just needs to be served right away, you're gonna cut off each end. I'm gonna score with a butter knife. When there's sap and it seems sticky, a way to not get as much gunk built up on your knife or in your bowl is to add some oil. I add oil in my pan and then put water in the plantains in and this helps be able to have less stickiness stuck to my pot or to the knife. This is how I blend it up to make a masa. And this is something you do for pasteles, for a little bit of the empanada batter, or even for the plantain pizza I'm gonna show you guys later. So what's amazing is that it's liquefied and practically a dough. Here we are with sweet potatoes. Most famously here in Hawaii, we know about the purple sweet potato. And what's really awesome about sweet potato is that it's super high in beta carotene, also known as vitamin A, and packed with other nutrients and minerals. Sweet potatoes, also known as uwala, can be used for all sorts of things. And the sweetness that imparts and that starchiness is a great starter thing to incorporate, especially with the children. So a lot of times how we like to cook sweet potatoes is whole. It's gonna make it last in your fridge longer and it's gonna hold that flavor into it. These types of sweet potatoes are best steamed or boiled, whereas the American, North American sweet potato that we also call a yam inappropriately, those things are better baked and they get really soft inside, but these really hold their starch and they're the same type of sweet potatoes used most commonly in South America and also other parts of Latin America. When I cook my sweet potatoes, I try to buy ones that are evenly the same size. These ones I would cook all together for my family because they're gonna have the same cook time. These bigger fat ones, it's really great to pierce with a knife or a fork for the heat to penetrate. And you're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes. Ulu or breadfruit grows on a tree. It produces perennial year after year. The amazing thing about ulu 
is that it is nutrient packed. It's more nutrient dense than rice and potato probably combined. So for ulu, there's so much variation of how you can cook this. And again, if you want it to store for a while or if you're going to be wanting to make some bigger pieces, you're going to cook it whole. But most often, we're going to cook it by cutting it in half. And also when you cook it in half, you can fit more in your pot. So I try to load up my pot, make use of the propane and have plenty. If you have just one, it doesn't really matter. So quartering it is how I know Ginger John and other people have taught me. I like it steamed more than boiled because it gets a little gelatinous and um, maybe it could be too soft if you boil it. Whereas steam is going to hold a lot more if it's structure with it. So a lot of times I just load up it quartered or it halved into the pot. And I like to steam it. If I have a basket on the bottom, that's great. Sometimes I don't even have time for a basket. I just throw it in and I have water at the bottom. And this is going to need to cook for anywhere around 25 minutes to if a full pot and it's really loaded or just have 30 minutes to 40 minutes. You can cook it without the peel. Sometimes for my kids, I just appease them and take off the peel even though I like it. So I'm going to take the ulu and take a little bit of extra time by cutting it and cubing it and having some vegetable broth or chicken broth on hand or coconut milk on hand. This is something that you can just infuse a delicious flavor and serve inside of your meal. I think the way that I fell in love with ulu for the first time was when it's cooked in the embers of a fire. So you can take a whole ulu, stick it in the embers of the fire, rotate it about an hour. You can then pull it out and What's cool about cooking it whole is that you could just leave it in the fire overnight and get it in the morning for breakfast or just serve it for dinner that time. Opening it up and having that fresh fire roasted ulu. Mm -hmm.